It's now up to the defense to present a case for the Cambridge man accused of killing a St. Croix father of five. Levi Aker Kendall is accused of stabbing Peter Kelly to death after the two engaged in a loud argument from across the St. Croix River. Aker Kendall is claiming he acted in self-defense after Kelly and a friend confronted the defendant over alleged pot smoking and loud behavior. Bill Hudson has been in court all week and he joins us live from the Polk County Courthouse. Sounds like an especially tough day in court today, Bill. A very tough day, Liz. A very tough day for jurors and the people that are in the courtroom. Four days of testimony from 15 witnesses and the state has indeed rested its case against Levi Aker Kendall, ending with the testimony of Christy Kelly, who told jurors her late husband was responsible, reliable, a great father and coach. And how many kids did you and Peter have together? After laying out the facts in its case, prosecution ended with emotion. Peter Kelly's widow fought tears as she described telling the couple's young children their father was dead. We told them to sit on the bed together, and I said, you remember how dad went fishing last night? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, um, something happened, and, and he died. And they screamed. Earlier today, the friend of Levi Aker Kendall's who tried to prevent the fight with Peter Kelly returned to the witness stand. Hank Michaels testified when Levi pulled out a knife. Kind of made um, Kelly back off a little bit, but it made him angrier. Michaels says Kelly grabbed Aker Kendall by the shoulders, yanking him from the car. Within seconds, Kelly is stabbed, and Aker Kendall jumps back in. It was chaotic. I mean, it was. Levi was freaking out. He didn't know what like, he just did. Another buddy, Stephen Phillips, says he got scared when Kelly's friend, Ross Leckman, pushed Levi to the ground. I was really scared because Levi had kind of been like the strongest one of all of us, and some guy had just tossed him around so easily. But it was the defendant's father who faced some of the day's harshest questioning. Travis Kendall is asked why he didn't call 911 after learning what his son had done. That sounds a lot more to like to me that you were worried about them being caught than you were worried about fishing gear after you were just told your son stabbed somebody. Would that be a fair conclusion? I was concerned for his safety. Now the defense will begin calling its first witnesses tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Should wrap up tomorrow, and we should learn tonight, uh, Liz, or they w at least will be talking tonight whether or not they're going to put their defendant, Levi Aker Kendall, on the stand tomorrow. It could be an interesting day tomorrow. Oh, it sounds that way. Now explain this so-called castle doctrine, Bill. That's really the question here, right? Can the d defendant legally yeah. claim self-defense? That's what they're claiming, the Castle Doctrine, allowing uh, that you have a, a reasonable use of force to defend yourself in your home or your, even your car. That's what defense is claiming. However, the state says since the killing actually happened outside of a vehicle, the Castle Doctrine should not apply. Furthermore, they're challenging the use of the weapon, which they believe is a uh, illegal weapon, a switchblade, which would uh, nullify the use of that law. So it could be interesting tomorrow. The judge is going to rule on that first thing tomorrow morning. All right, Bill Hudson. Live in Wisconsin covering day four in this trial for us. Bill, thank you.